Amen. So we're going to talk about the gift of reconciliation. And to reconcile means just to get back together on good terms, okay? But before we do that, let's talk about a little bit of history. I don't know my brother's a history buff, but as we celebrate uh, Christmas, uh, what really is Christmas? What did Christmas come about? How did it come about? Like, what was the first Christmas celebrated? Who knows that? Was it celebrated like 1 AD? What do we think? Like, Christ was born 1 AD? No, Christmas was not celebrated until uh, like 336. Y'all heard of Constantine before? The Roman Emperor, right? Here's a great story. It's a really good story. Constantine, he was he was a pagan. I mean, he did not worship God. He didn't. He worshiped false gods like statues and, and Mithra and sun gods and all that kind of stuff. So he was a pagan. He had a great battle against one of his worst enemies. And they say, and the story says, he saw a cross in the sun. He prayed to his God. He prayed to the sun to say, Sun God, help me win this victory, this battle. And he saw a cross imposed in the sun. And the, and the cross is one of the greatest symbols in the world because everybody sees the cross and know means Christ. In Rome, people were crucified on the cross. So he knew automatically, like, oh, wow, Jesus Christ, he really was the Son of God. So at that point, he became a Christian. He was converted into Christianity. Okay? So Constantine, he went, he won the battle, he became a Christian. And at that time, Rome was a huge empire, right? It was like the United States of America. So he had people who practiced all types of religions. So he decided to unify his empire by celebrating his new religion, which is Christianity, as, long as, as well as the other pagan traditions. So he decided, let's go with December 25th, because on December 25th, all the other pagan people in the, in the empire were celebrating Mithra, they were celebrating sun, solar, all these different gods. So he said, huh, let's be smart about this. How can I bring my Christian people as well as my pagan people together to celebrate their guys in a festival, and he decided he's in the 25th. And it wasn't until a few years later, a guy by the name of Pope Julius decided and decreed that December 25th was the birth of Jesus Christ. This is a little history lesson. So Christ was born around 7 BC, according to most scholars, but for some reason we did not begin celebrating Chris Christmas until the 4th century. So to think about. Right? And if you also do your history, uh, you do your history homework, you would realize that Christ, if you look at when they did the Passover feast, the fact that he would be born in December makes no sense. It makes no sense. All right? It does not match up with the way things work out. But it is a day we recognize his birth because we should be recognizing his birth and his presence in us at all times. That's a kicker. Now, this is not the only time you will give stuff to the Salvation Army. This is not be the only time you speak to people who don't look like you. This is not be the only time you care about family, you, you, you reach out, you are like, we should have the Christian spirit at all times because that's, we have a God who's Emmanuel, who's God with us, and that's one who should be worthy of our praise at all times. So we're going to discuss this morning the gift of reconciliation and what does Christ's birth and his death mean? All right, so we go forward. We like to set things off. We set things off by getting you kind of your wheel spinning. And this question here for everyone to answer is, uh, what is the true meaning of Christmas? What does it mean? Family comes together. Okay, what else does it mean? Jesus died on the cross. Okay, what else is the meaning of Christmas? Do you wear red and green? Being Christ-like? All the time. Okay? Well, the actual meaning of Christ, of Christmas, if you just look at the word, looking at it, it means that Christ is sent. Okay, if you look at, you look at the, the Greek and the Latin, and Christmas, mass means like the death of, all right? And then Christ means the Messiah, so he is sent. Christmas means that Christ has been sent. Now, the next question is this, all right? Why is it important? What's important about Jesus Christ's arrival? This is a probing question. When you think about Christ's sin, what's so important about Jesus Christ? And the fact that he came. He's God's son. What else? A lot of good answers here. I saw your hand, Kevin. What's the point about Christ's arrival? Because he's son? All right. Kevin? You don't know? He died on the cross for our sins. That's very important. But what, uh, we saw a lot of history. But there is some of the, the fact there was like over 400 years where God did not speak. Right? So what do you think went on in those 40 years? Chaos. 
a whole lot of wrongdoing, a whole lot of sinning. For a long time, people were like, from Malachi, the book of Malachi, the last book of the New, uh, Old Testament, to Matthew, there was 40 years of God is like, I'm just going to watch out this kind of self-destruct. Because judge after judge, king after king, you guys just keep on screwing up. It's like, I'm going to do better, I'm going to do better. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. So, it's very important. So, let's look at the scripture right here, our foundation scripture. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. Today, we come from the NIV. Uh, no telling where we come from, but this, this right here speaks volumes. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Okay? While we were still sinners, still sinners, Christ died for us. His arrival is important because if he did not come, he could not have died. So, he had to come to die for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom uh, we have now received reconciliation. Big word there, reconciliation. All right, so let's move this uh, verse by verse, verse, precept by precept. Love and action. All right, we have to love in action. My dad says all the time, love in, in, in deeds, not just words. Because lip service is Amen. just what it is. Just what it is. I love you, baby. <laughs> really? <laughs> show it. <laughs> prove it. It's a song. If you love it, show it. If you love it, prove it. All right. God didn't just say, "I for God so love the world." The scripture does not end right there. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. Did he just give like a little bit? No. He gave his only begotten son. Like, it's all I got, I'm going to give it to you. Because I love you so much. Like, like if we were eating like a, a really nice cookie or something, or like sweets, and Cam and says, Carter, can I have that? But it's my only cookie. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> But now you know what, dude? I love you. Here you go. Because I love you. So that's what God did. He gave. He actually did something. A lot of people, I'm sorry, we are so fake. You and myself from time to time. Like, yeah, huge amen. Like, hey, I love you. You're a great other, but I don't really feel like. No, it's too, it's too inconvenient. I don't want to inconvenience myself. But God gave. He loved. You think about it. Jesus Christ came down from heaven. To live here. Have y'all live? Right? Would you come from heaven to go live here? Like in, in, in back in BC, they didn't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, Tyler, <laughs> they come, they come out, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? Like Jesus had, hey, hey, I'm gonna go crash in that room right there. But he was born in a manger. Like we ate goat milk and sheep milk cheese, and he had sheep and goats breathing over him in the manger. He came then at a time where it wasn't so great. They didn't have running water, they had a restaurant, but he, he came, okay? But the question here is, it says, while we were still sinners, would you help someone who did you wrong? Yeah. Would you help them? Because Christ, there, he's sitting there, look, the picture is in your spiritual imagination. He's sitting there with God on the right hand of God, and they're just looking for 399 years, 40 years, they say, you know what? They're going to keep on doing this. I know that in 2017, Dale's going to do. I know that Mark Sanders is going to do. I know that Jeremiah will do this. Or Tina, but I'm just going to go down there anyway. And save, and save them. So he came down to die for us. This is very, very big. So we got to make sure we're going to be more Christ like. We have to begin to love in action. We can't, we can't just keep doing the lip service because here's the deal somebody had to do it. Like Daddy mentioned, he mentioned Lauren, and we mentioned here before. There's so many people who came before, all right? We have all been justified by his blood. There's been a long list of failures. Think about these great men in the Bible. Uh, they all have some type of setback. We talk about Solomon. He had his wives, and he did his wrong. He had his concubines. He began to, he started out doing really well, then he kind of fell off. David, what did David do? Like, oh, a lot. Okay. What about Noah? You know, getting drunk. And what about Moses? I mean, what about all that? Samson? All these, these pillars, all these people, uh, Joshua, all these people sort to look up to. There's a long list of people who just can cut the mustard. 
I come and tell you right now, you all, we all been tired of depending on people to try to help us and try to make us through. But there are nothing more than people or things that will help us just, they just fail. There's some boys in our lives we try to fill with people and things and habits and places we go, but it's just going to join another long list of failures. There's only one person who can satisfy that void in your life, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. You can keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. You continue to be disappointed. You expect things out of people and places and stuff you put in your body habits, but with the more you expect, the more failure and disappointment you have. And that makes you question God because God, He's supposed to help me. First of all, God, I'm in a situation right now. And second of all, God, I don't feel like you're helping me. Well, you're trying to do things by your own self. Mm-hmm. And you try to take matters in your own hand because you doubt God. When we, when we don't see God doing things quick enough, right? Well, well God, you, you're not moving quick enough. I'm going to take care of this. <laughs> now, I need that by next week. Since you didn't do it, it's a year later. I'm going to go ahead and get my own man. I'm going to find my own situation. I'm going to take care of man from my own hand. But we got to make sure that we prevent that because Christ says, I will do it. Send me, I'll go. And the scripture says here, how much more should we save, through, from, uh, save from God's wrath through him? Because to be honest, we have a whole lot of wrongdoing. And it's not just like that Christ came for us and like he just took care of all of our sin. We just keep on sinning, right? Like it's Christmas now. We love, we love, it's great. But come New Year's, what are we going to do? Right. <laughs> I'll talk to you all next year. All right. right, right I'm, I'm going to turn, turn it up, right? Today is like CME Day. A lot of churches are filled with people who haven't come to church since Easter, our Mother's Day. They might be back and watch night before they go to the club. So, so that's what we do. A whole lot of wrongdoing. Somebody had to do it. This is what I love. This picture spoke volumes when I looked it up. But the fact that Jesus Christ was an atoning sacrifice. What does it mean to atone? Who knows what it means to atone? Make sure everybody gets this. It would be an atoning sacrifice. Just have wait time. Appropriate wait time. Well, he took the, our place. We the ones in, but he took the, he paid a debt for us that he didn't owe. Exactly. Uh, he didn't owe it, but he paid for somebody else. He took our place, so we wouldn't have to do that ever last. Ever last death. Exactly. When someone just takes your place. Tag team. Tag team, right. This is us. You see this guy? This is us. This is like American Alpha. What's this? American Alpha. American, American Alpha. Yeah, I know. There you go. Amen. All right. So this is us in the fight of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Like, we're going through sickness. We're going through the loss of loved ones. We're going through depression. We're going through temptation. We're going through all types of trouble. We are in the square, right there in the middle. We are getting our tail beat, and we are right here. Just like, can somebody please tag me out? And you, you, you ever watch a wrestling match? You get beat. You just trying to crawl to the ring, and your other part is you trying to reach out. Then it looks like I'm just crawling. I could just touch your finger. Can I just touch your finger? Like, oh, tag, come on, get in here, Jesus. Because I'm getting beat to the rings. Because here's what it says: for while we were God, we were reconciled to Him. Like we were, we were made right, we were made good. So, so how much more have a reconciled? So we be saved through His life. So we be saved by just reaching out to Him, because He is right there reaching out to us. Say, I know you're going through something right now. I know it's the holidays. You think about your mom. I know you're going through. You want to hit that bottle a little bit too hard. I know you're going through. You broke. I know you're going through. You depressed. I know you're going through. You sick. You, you have doubts. You know what the new year has a whole. I know you are going through. I'm right here reaching out, tag. Like, I, even though I see you sinning, even though I know what you're going to do next year, I know what's going on, but I'm still, I love you. Just tag. Can you just have enough energy? Can you let go of some things? Can you let go of that phone? Can you let go of distractions? Can you let go of that whatever that bad that's holding you back? Because anytime I watch a tag team match, it's always that, that enemy, that opponent who's trying to hold you and keep you from reaching your partner's hand. There's something right now that's trying to hold you back. It's going to try to hold you back in 2018, 19, 2020. You can be right here in 2025 looking the same depressed way. This will be Southern Christmas 15. You can still look the same depressed way. 
Is it 15, 16? Was you were debating? You were sit looking with the same sick face, and Jesus Christ said, "Like, just tag me in, bro. I'm right here. We reconcile. I know you messed up, but it is my blood that has saved you and redeemed you. Although your sins have washed you as black as these attires, you see the coast of shirt, but it is my blood that has made you as white as snow." You have been reconciled. So just reach in and tag me. And I'll take care and fight all of your battles. And once that happens, you can brag. You ever know say when we make your wrestling analogy? Well, you are the champ. You are the belt on your shoulder. You are the belt on your waist. You say we are the tag team champ of the world. You have something to brag about because the scripture says here, not only is it so, but we also boast in God. Uh -huh. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not about myself. Right. I don't need 5,000 likes on Facebook. Because if I get them, it ain't about me. It's about Him. Yeah. When you see my profile picture with my wife, it ain't because I did something so great because of Him. Because I screw up. It's a, it's a piece of God. It's in her mind that I love Him in spite of His, his wretchedness. When you see my children and oh he's a Duke tip scholar, he's doing this, he's doing that, it ain't about me. Right. It's about him. Amen. Amen. So I have nothing to say except glory to God. You might see it, but it's all about him. We are a reflection of Jesus Christ as we boast. But Chris asked me a question, you started saying, she said, did you mean to pull that tree up? What do y'all know about this tree? And that's how we are. Cause I pull, I got here the first time I pulled to the church and said, "Oh, I only have these lights burning." But it spoke volumes to me because in our lives we only have doing it. If we were even singing here praising God, only half of us praising God. I don't mean somebody toes, right? Like God to help you get here, like God to help you make it, like God. Oh, thank you. Mm, okay, let's get through this fire service. Like God ain't nobody. Like how you breathing right now? How did plane didn't blow up when it landed? <laughs> Are you hitting a goose or something like that? How did how did truck the eighteen wheeler didn't just swerve? Be stayed in on lane. Tell me how that happened. How the house didn't set on fire that Christmas tree was lit up and you know. The candles, you like to say, I smell it so good in the house. The wind didn't blow and the, and the certificate didn't light up. How did that happen? Yeah. Explain. Somebody here, here's the microphone. But we are like, God ain't nobody. He ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But, but here we are. We just have to do it like the tree. And then we do want, we want to boast like we've done something so well. But here it is. We got to brag about God versus brag about our stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because we have now received reconciliation through Him. It's because of God, His grace, His mercy that we're allowed to do anything yes. at all. Yes. It is a gift from God. I don't know what you have under the tree. I know children, you might be expecting a lot of great stuff. Adults, you might expect some great things. But they said Jesus Christ is the best gift ever. His life, His grace, His mercy is some great reconciliation. It is a great gift. Okay, that's what we need to take for granted. We need to make sure we are boasting about Christ. We're all about Him. It's all about Him. Not just today, but every yeah, yeah. single day. Yeah, yeah. Every single day. But here it is. We like to keep it personal, all right? So, how do I celebrate Christmas every day? You say, every day I'm lit. Are you really lit every day? You partially lit some days, it's Friday, you lit more on Tuesday, on uh, Wednesday, on a bad day. I'm not lit so much today. And when you shine, you shine for Jesus Christ. Are you trying to shine for thine own self? To thine own self shine. Is it about you or is it about him? Personally, like for real. This is for you to be self-reflective. Because when I came, I really just like, oh, this true, this thing. You know, we get ready to come on a new year. We like to self-reflect. We like, well, I did so well this year. What's going to do next year? Think about that every day because right now is a year later than last year. We start a new year right now. 
All right, so what we like to do, we sort of like doing this as well. We want to make sure we get some help and some support. You didn't just come here to fulfill an obligation of a Southern Christmas Story itinerary. You didn't just come here because it was across the street. You did not just come here so God lets you, because you stay, you can stay in a bed. Amen. So I'm just keeping out on there. I ain't going to church. They can be mad all I want to. You could have done that, but to make sure we are enjoying, uh, we are just embracing God's love for us, let's look at the fact that we need to acknowledge the gift of grace. There should be no happy faces. Oh, I didn't get what I wanted on my Christmas list. You already have the gift of grace. You have the gift of life. You have the gift of eternal life because if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the beautiful thing about it, no matter what you do, no matter how bad you've been, he's not Santa Claus. Jesus Christ is not Santa Claus. Well, you, you, it's a merit-based reward system. <laughs> All right? Like, you've been good this year. You get some good gifts. Think about it, with Jesus Christ, we could be bad and still go to heaven. Based on the thing that we just believe, because Ephesians 2 and 8 says, don't think that it's any of our works. Salvation is a gift of grace. You can be bad. I'm not saying it goes like this, paint the time red, but even though all of our sins, God, it's just a drop of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we've been reconciled. That's the beautiful thing about it. And we'll close out with this. The good news that Samika warned about. The good news is this. So you can walk in and be excited about it. So you know that this is true. This is in God's word. It's going to be motivated as I face the rest of the week. And I know I have a fight. I'm facing some really big time opponents this week in the ring. I know I have a partner I can tag to at any given time. His word says this. But the gift is not like the trespass. The gift we receive is not like the crap we do. Not like the mess we do. It's like I know what Carter's going to get for Christmas. I know going to get but then it's so funny. I walked to my house. I'm like, oh, here's somebody drew on the wall. Did my six-year-old draw a stick figure on the kitchen wall? <laughs> my six-year-old, huh, who knows, like, we don't draw on walls. I've never done it before. <laughs> All right, like, just, I mean, just three days before Christmas. Let me get this. Just put on. I'm going to pull a mustache right there. <laughs> All right, let me shade in the head and a little goatee and all the sand. Perfect. Right there on the kitchen wall. You walk right past like, oh, that's nice, Carter. But the thing is, like, we are with Jesus Christ. Like, we just screw up, but the gift is nothing compared to the trespass. It's nothing compared to the offense. Like, we crucify Christ of flesh daily, all the time. But can you imagine, like, all the stuff we do compared to living in heaven eternally? It does not compare. For if the many die by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Looking back all the way at Genesis, Adam, because of Adam, it was Eve's fault as well, because... You know, men are moved by women. Right? Because of, of what Adam did, all of us become sinful. But because of what Jesus Christ did, we have all become righteous and reconciled. Amen. And that's the good news. As you celebrate Christmas, as you think about loved ones who may be here, who might have moved on or transitioned, you still can celebrate the fact that no matter what you have underneath the tree, no matter if you're eating Christmas dinner alone or you have plenty of people around, you might be amongst hundreds and you still might feel alone. You still have the comfort of Jesus Christ. You still have the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And you still can know that no matter what I get or no matter what I don't get, I still have the gifts of grace. Amen. And that's something to be excited about each and every day of the year. You can walk around with your head held high for the rest of the year and knowing that you have the best Christmas gift ever. And that's what it's all about. Right. So this time, you know, we never ever know who has accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior. This is all about. It's about conversion, first and foremost. And then it's about development. You can't develop unless of course you, of course, convert. Okay? So we understand it's so simple. We even children understand. You just must first accept. You accept Santa Claus. He's coming, you guys. Come Santa Claus. Come on down the chimney now. He's coming. But 
It's like Santa Claus coming so is Jesus. But unlike Santa Claus, we never ever know when Jesus Christ is coming back. We gonna look at the news and I even gonna check. Oh, right now Santa Claus is coming from Canada. He'll be down in Jackson around around 1 a.m. Be ready, kids. Make sure you're asleep. But CNN will not report the coming of Jesus Christ. WJTV will not record the coming of Christ at, at, at 12 o'clock on November the 30th. Jesus Christ is fixing to return. Be sure you're ready. No one will ever know. But I want to make sure this is my sole purpose. Just to share the word so we can all try to accept and just believe it's coming back. And simply just confess. You can be saved by just saying, God, believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He is the Messiah. He died for my sins. And because of him, I have the gift of reconciliation. I have grace and mercy. And then other than that, y'all, as we do that, we're going to try to develop. Just keep on working. We're trying to develop. We keep on working. We keep striving. In spite of how many times we mess up, we can just get back up. I mean, how many times your opponent hits you in the head and beats you with you in a chokehold, you can get back up. Your partner's still there. Like, I can still tag you. And yeah, we're going to win this battle. Do you know if Jesus Christ is your tag team partner? You are guaranteed to win. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what he said or she said. I don't care what feeling they hurt. You are still guaranteed to win. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care how long you've been hurt by it. I don't care what the enemy said. Satan is telling you. I don't care what that spirit is. You are still going to win. Let's face it. We believe so much stuff, but do we believe, actually believe in Jesus? We believe in his presence. We believe in his arrival. We believe in his death. But do we believe what he can do in our lives? We can have like surface belief. Like, I believe enough so I don't have to go to hell. But do I believe that Jesus Christ can heal me from this disease? Do I believe enough to know that Jesus Christ can give me that job? Do I believe that Jesus Christ can reconcile my relationship? Do I believe that Jesus Christ can help heal, he can help deliver, can set me free? I know it might be inconceivable to people because you are what you are. You've been away for so long. But you know Jesus Christ can do all things. It begins with your faith in him. You can have according to your faith. If you don't have it, you won't get it. Amen. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. 